thank you, Calvin. And um, <clears throat> as uh, you probably suspect, it's an exaggeration. Um, um, as they say, I just work here. Um, <clears throat> it is a uh, really a great uh, privilege uh, and, 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 and a surprise for me to come back to the league in this uh, role uh, because it makes me more than anything think about how important an institution it is. Uh, as I was discussing just a second ago, I mean, you know, you need these shocks to really make you remember what is important in our field. And I think that the League is perhaps one of the very few <clears throat> institutions that are hardworking, intellectually sophisticated, um, passionate, and above all, loving of a field that uh, tends to be um, very um, difficult to love uh, sometimes. And uh, this is our field. <clears throat> I. I uh, take notice that, that we are in one of the best architectural schools in the world, I would say, and that makes us all a lot more um, uh, uh, conscious of uh, how important it is to try to, um, um, uh, to share with uh, people not only what you do, but some of the thoughts that cross your mind while you're doing them. Um, the League invited me to uh, come here and talk on my recent projects. And uh, it, 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 for one thing, it sort of took off some freedom of thinking about what would I talk about. But um, I, I think it's a terrific thing just to uh, circumscribe it to that. Um, uh, the only problem is that um, um, uh, I think I, I, um, I don't have too much to say. I mean, I was thinking what to say, but I'd rather um, because everything that I have to say is unrelated to uh, architecture as, um, as, a, as, a, um, uh, as a kind of occupation that we all have uh, day in and day out. I mean, as students or practitioners or people that write about it or whatever, but um, uh, more as architecture in the context of a rather significant cultural crisis, which I, I think that we all are uh, going through. It is always good to pull back and, and, and just um, forget uh, for, for a longer period of time that we're involved into a critical uh, enterprise which actually threatens in many ways the, uh, not just the, 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 the livelihood, uh, the source of livelihood that architecture represents, but also its function as a as an important source of cultural discourse. And it seems to me that um, uh, most of the, um, of the um, um, sort of more cerebral thoughts are, 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 are left for another discussion, perhaps on, on a different context in which we can actually uh, openly talk about that. So what I uh, uh, brought here tonight to talk to you, to show you is a series of projects that are within that loose and interesting um, uh, category of the recent projects. And um, I, for me, uh, projects are buildings, and therefore, uh, maybe they're not absolutely that recent, but they're all belonging to the period between the end of 19, the 2008, just that to, to let you know how old I am, and, um, and, and this year. <clears throat> Uh, there, there has been, and, and I'm grateful to have something to show you, as I'm sure you would if, uh, if, if, if you did too, which I'm sure you do. But primarily, the, 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 the thing was that uh, we concentrated uh, in the office during this crisis in trying to consolidate the work that we had and, and produce the best that we could. And some of them are, in my view, quite interesting. Um, um, most of them are uh, endearing to me, and, um, and some of them may actually uh, uh, help visualize some other things about this business of operating abroad and having at the same time a very local firm and a very, very much of an interest in what happens in New York. Um, I wanted to show you two projects which are really quite significant. Probably I'll spend a little bit more time on this one. Uh, because it is uh, 
a very interesting subject, this question of uh, redevelopment of industrial sites. The two of them are uh, uh, very, very similar because they, uh, they actually uh, uh, have to suffer two absolutely, in my view, horrific buildings. One is the factory for Domino and the other one is the Battersea Power Station, two of the most significant polluting and, and, um, and, and socially discredited institutions in the history of both cities, London and New York. Um, uh, the uh, whole source of how these buildings become beloved is usually something that happens on the other shore of a river. And um, this is a view of what you, how you see um, uh, the Domino Sugar Factory, and it has this uh, sort of iconic tower in the center, a mass. Uh, people in London, uh, uh, and particularly from Chelsea, which is uh, one of the most expensive districts in the city, is uh, it overlook this pair of, uh, of, of uh, large chimneys. This is the largest brick building in the world. It's a, in, in, in a complete anomaly. It looks symmetrical, and it isn't. Uh, Sir Gilbert Scott fought with uh, uh, the uh, engineers that run this uh, um, um, uh, 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 coal burning facility up to 1956 to try to make it be a piece of architecture and it's a complete uh, um, sort of violation of all the basic principles uh, the guy wanted to do, but they have become landmark and therefore you have to deal with them in a way which uh, you know, starts by putting you in the, pro in, the, in the difficult position to think that you have to talk about them as if they were important, glamorous pieces of architecture, and I don't think they are. I have a couple of, um, um, and this is one of these restrictions which in the case of Battersea is perhaps by far more determinant than, than the uh, Domino Sugar Factory because it, it occupies literally the only part of the site that could actually be developed. There's an enormous amount of the main main of uh, water supply for the whole city runs right underneath the site, so it, it makes for a very, very difficult process. I mean, you know, both of them are in the last um, uh, 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 days of, or months of uh, the, a very gruesome approval pro uh, process, which uh, uh, in the case of um, 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 uh, uh, the, the Domino Sugar Factory, uh, has taken literally four years. And in the case of uh, Battersea, three and a half. Uh, in two different planning processes which are uh, equally um, sort of um, uh, sadistic, but at the same time uh, completely different in the mechanics of how they actually impose certain ideas on, on the uh, potential architecture of it. Both of them are primarily a challenge to design a plan that could not only give a sense of architectural distinction and uh, sort of finality, but at the same time maintain open-ended conditions such that many more designers could come and work on them. Um, the, the domino site, uh, which is here in this sort of tan color, um, uh, is, a, is a tremendous uh, uh, a waterfront edge that was uh, left out of the long <clears throat> uh, rezoning uh, that was called uh, uh, Williamsburg uh, 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 that got approved last year precisely because of the special conditions of the heritage piece and also the, um, uh, the extraordinary frontage over uh, the river. We won a competition on this, but uh, basically because what I essentially proposed was that what it was really missing, I didn't care very much about the housing, uh, was to try to connect uh, Hudson with uh, um, um, uh, uh, Brooklyn with a pedestrian bridge. This is the narrowest part of the whole uh, development of the river. And I think that is sort of like a maximized Venice that is, uh, is kind of missing. And we know what we propose in here was to uh, develop a pedestrian bridge that continues the street onto the one of the main uh, arteries of circulation in Brooklyn, which is uh, really quite important, and, and sort of package the, the, the project in between. Um, the site, as you see, is very uh, low density. The, the, the development requires a, 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 a bulk configuration that uh, really calls for high 
uh, high-rise buildings, and therefore uh, um, sort of making very difficult the whole process of how to uh, deal with uh, uh, with the adjacent community. All of these things are uh, even further uh, um, complicated by the fact that this is supposed to be uh, a significant piece of architecture. Um, it, in my research, because I couldn't believe that anybody would say that this is uh, really a wonderful piece of architecture, we <clears throat> uh, uh, discovered, without much digging, I must say, that um, the building was bought uh, uh, practically prefabricated completely in Germany. Um, and it was uh, shipped to New York and installed directly uh, on site. Uh, most of which got transformed because inside of this there is a sugar uh, re refinery which requires a lot of height and uh, equipment of many uh, different qualities. And the end result is something that has absolutely no logic with the fenestration, no logic with the use of the material, and much less logic with the use of the chimney, which is really the, the thing that really started this thing. It was bought um, uh, on a rush by the family that owned uh, Dominus Sugar, and um, and they bought the um, the wrong building for the for the for the kind of purpose that they needed, but they accommodated it because it was in the ship already. Um, uh, uh, on an aside, this is also the same manufacturer that uh, actually uh, built Auschwitz, and uh, just as a reference. Uh, uh, this whole community is the highest Orthodox uh, Jewish community in New York. And uh, so they learned to uh, hate this building for many reasons, but people on the other shore of the, of the river happened to love it, and then therefore uh, there is this uh, uh, conflict of it. Um, the city wanted a, uh, a, a sort of bulk regulation of this kind, and I, understandably, I mean, you know, it's basically how do you create a series of uh, envelopes within which future developments could occur uh, based on a typology which is essentially always the typology of the slab, which is what uh, developers have convinced um, uh, uh, the city that is practically the only thing that is affordable, a double-loaded long corridor, single core in the center and units on, on either side. <clears throat> um, this was all, as you can see, before uh, the factory got uh, landmark. Um, and what we proposed was to take exactly the same configuration of the slab, but uh, force the massing to be articulated with a series of regular envelopes that by combination could become either U-shape or uh, uh, perpendicular slabs or longitudinal slabs according to the development of each of them so in, a, in a way uh, is nothing other than just a step forward in defining uh, a, type, a, a, topo a typology that somehow could accommodate, um, uh, as I say, even the most uh, uh, sort of boring of all buildings, but that somehow in the form in which these um, uh, shafts are articulated, uh, or as percentages of displacement between each of them and different heights and, and the ratios at which they can uh, cap at the top, um, they could provide a, 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 an architecture that it is a little bit more interesting than that. This is essentially the, the, um, the plan, and the plan has a, uh, a, an enormous uh, water, water front edge uh, park in here, which is, uh, 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 which is also sitting on the, on the old uh, um, a foundation of the, of the large explanade that uh, maneuver the, the sugar from packaging to shipping. Um, and this is a, an original picture of how this thing would look and a, a model of how this thing has uh, been evolving over the years. And then finally, with an add-on onto a system of, of uh, facade treatments, which without prescribing exactly the openings, again, has a, uh, a, a, a degree of, f of freedom that uh, um, uh, doesn't rely on vertical uh, uh, extrusions and, 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 and that basically calls for a series of uh, uh, differentiated uh, facade treatments as the buildings uh, go to the top. And these are just some images of how the, the project could be built um, 
in, uh, in, in, in comparison with, uh, with that, uh, the Battersea Power Station, which is, this is the Thames, and uh, um, uh, the um, uh, uh, House of Parliament is located here. And the site is a very large site, which has been uh, attempted to be developed four times before uh, at an extraordinary expense. And, uh, um, uh, a, a group uh, 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 of developers bought it and held a, a, a competition to try to uh, also come up with ideas to develop a site which is essentially a, a, a cul-de-sac. Um, there is a viaduct here that is impenetrable in the east-west. This is a wonderful park called Battersea Park and, um, and, uh, and this is Victoria Station. So in a way is is, is incredibly central to central London. This, by the way, is the Royal Hospital. This is Chelsea, which is the most expensive part of the city. Um, so there's this possibility of, of developing the site, which we started uh, actually even before um, uh, the building was graded again. <clears throat> it finally got graded. Um, uh, it is a an enormous structure is approximately 240 meters in length in this direction uh, without windows. It's an unbelievable mass of, of brick. Uh, it had two wings. It started being built only half in this direction. Uh, there's the turbine hall in here, the machine that produces the electricity and the, um, um, uh, and the crashing and the uh, processing uh, to the boiler of the factory was located in this enormous uh, room in the center which got demolished uh, by a developer that wanted to do an entertainment center in here. Um, the building has been exposed to the, uh, uh, to the elements for close to 45, 50 years. It's about to be uh, uh, you know, crumbling on its own. Uh, it, it, this is the viaduct I was saying before. There is a, uh, an enormous amount of industrial settle settlements around and a very, very difficult uh, project to, to, to work. You can see here the opening that has been created. This is approximately two football fields in length. Um, the chimneys are uh, absolutely massive and they, are, um, they, are at, uh, they were built at the beginning of the use of concrete and, uh, and therefore they are under rainforest and they are at, at risk of collapsing again. I mean, you know, the, the, the reason why there is nothing around is because um, our office is located somewhere here, the project office, and um, it's almost in, you know, impossible to walk around. The idea in the project is this re-addition of bringing the water back into around the main, the main building just to create a, a, a kind of halo, a kind of uh, uh, a lung of uh, space within which a series of buildings create internal courtyards um, uh, through a series of roads that link what normally would have been a grid into something which is totally determined by the geometry of the, of the railroad system and, 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 the, and the manipulation of coal for electricity. It was the, the, uh, the largest uh, um, uh, source of carbon dioxide in, um, in, uh, in London and still was up until 1968 or so. Um, uh, and uh, what the main uh, uh, idea of the project was to try to transform the station back into a clean energy uh, um, uh, 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 plant uh, that uses refuse that comes, uh, that come from the, uh, from the boat circulation on the Thames and so instead of coal, now we get uh, garbage into the uh, into the the, the plant, and the uh, the the four chimneys will exhaust eventually, um, uh, a plume again, but it will be uh, uh, water vapor at the top. So the building tends to be again a a couple of uh, very simple moves. I mean, it's it's sort of like a re-addition of the idea of the terrace. Uh, you know, it's a very large terracing building that moves almost in, in plan at will. Uh, each of the uh, buildings will be developed by different architects also, but different architects working together in one major uh, uh, component of the project. So there are large uh, units around, and the station is transformed, as I say, into an energy plan and, and a convention center. 
uh, this is a view of the building uh, uh, of, the, of the plan uh, from the south, uh, uh, looking north. Um, this is St. James Park. Uh, so the location is absolutely spectacular, but it's literally uh, completely separated from, from, from uh, the life of the city by these major arteries of circulation. Luckily, uh, the American embassy is now going to be built uh, um, less than half a mile from here, so that, that changes the kind of utilization of the project uh, in a way. Um, a, a, again, a very large, uh, there, there is a water pool here that goes uh, into a, uh, 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 towards the, uh, the main uh, street, which is Patterson Park Road. Um, there are, it's a mixed use project, it has offices and, and residentials of different uh, levels and uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, public housing at the same time and the whole thing is basically try to guide the eye to frame the building from across the river, generate a series of frontages that take advantage of the views which are quite spectacular and creating these internal courtiers at the end. <clears throat> um, uh, the, this is a view connecting under the viaduct, which is the only passage to links with Battersea Park City. There is a Battersea uh, Park. Uh, there is a, uh, the project affords also a very large uh, um, uh, new uh, tube station that serves uh, the whole part of uh, uh, the southern part of London, and it's uh, uh, paid by the developers as an extension that uh, costs around 320 million pounds in itself. And this is the kind of operation that we've been able to do with the facade, just so opening these very long uh, windows that are uh, recollections of the, of the original fenestration that was in the drawings that um, uh, Sir Gilbert Scott uh, designed, and a reflecting pool that separates uh, a, 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 cir a circular road from, from the axis of the building. At the top of the building, there are offices located too, and the whole base of the building is the um, uh, clean energy production uh, facility. Um, the two turbine halls are, are, are recovered for um, um, uh, a couple of uh, 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 100,000 square, square feet of uh, uh, high-end retail. Um, uh, this is one of the shoulders of the project, the large uh, um, uh, uh, boiler uh, 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 hall is located here. That's where the convention center uh, will be located. Two buildings that were completed last year, and uh, uh, well, actually, uh, uh, one was completed, the other one, and uh, we did the drawings, and uh, um, uh, it is about to start construction. It did start construction again during the crisis, got stopped, and now is starting again. Um, one is the theater in a very, um, in a very, in an absolutely wonderful place in the northern part of Italy, in uh, England, um, which is Leicester. You might remember Jim Sterling built uh, what I consider to be one of the most amazing pieces of contemporary architecture, and if you haven't seen it, you should go see it, which is the School of Engineering. And so I, I wanted to see the building. I, uh, I got acquainted to somebody in the uh, university. They said that there was a competition to build a theater and we uh, presented this scheme. Um, the town is, uh, is very diversified. It's 55% uh, people from, uh, from Africa and from uh, <clears throat> India. Um, and, and they have a very traditional all English theater company that, <clears throat> that it gets transformed by this ethnic crossing with all of these different kinds of experiences. And uh, uh, the people in charge uh, wanted to do something they really, you know, didn't exactly know at that point uh, what it was, but this notion of the uh, inside out theater. They thought that the theater was. Uh, uh, I think rightly, an activity that really is a, a lot more significant in terms of urban regeneration and providing jobs and all the rest of it, uh, much more than the two hours of the show. Uh, that, and, and they wanted to have the, 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 the visibility of all the production process uh, uh, open to the city. It's a very difficult site in a corner. Uh, there's a landmark building across the street. The main idea was that you could actually have the street enclosed and the street become the stage. And 
of course, this is a, is a, is a generic idea, but it, it, it wasn't really very much different than that at the end. So this is the main uh, uh, road of circulation. From here, you go up to the, to the, to the center of town. Um, uh, there is a wonderful mini park in here. The train station is at the bottom left of the image, and then you cross like this and enter this very large loft space, um, which looks like this, and it has two objects inside, and all the production uh, facilities are lined up on the two walls of the site. Um, so this, this is a, an 800 seat uh, a black box, and in the back there is a, a, a um, no, this is a 400, and the 800 is a frontal theater. And then what we did was to connect the two, uh, this is the landmark building that I was mentioning before, to connect the two, uh, the two theaters in one single, with one single stage that lifts up with the nomadic pistons up to the top of the, of the, of the fly space. And then the rehearsal in both, in both theaters, in both venues, is visible from the street. A lot of trouble with people thinking, well, what are the actors that are gonna want that? It's become a real source of change in the way in which people perceive the whole practice of theater, such a, an amazingly traditional and and, and, and well-organized uh, 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 um, uh, art in, in England. Um, the street uh, penetrates the material of the outdoor street, comes into the lobby, and there are a couple of um, uh, food places in there, and the lobby is basically in between uh, the wall and the two boxes. Um, uh, hanging from the roof, there is this louver system. This is also oriented to the north. Um, uh, to the south, rather, and it is the lateral forces are taken by a canopy that uh, that becomes the main um, uh, um, uh, system of uh, access to the upper levels, upper tiers of the of the project uh, of the of the halls, as you can see in here. And this is what I was saying before: the the, the large um, um, fly space has been removed in here, which actually transforms this. Um, uh, this uh, uh, venue as a complement to the other, so there have been uh, uh, new productions designed specifically for this possibility of having two different audiences look at the back and the front of a, of a show. And uh, there are a couple of, there are at least two new plays that have been uh, written uh, basically to take advantage of that. Now this is, uh, uh, this is what you can see when when the boxes come down, when the whole fly space comes down to the street. And to finish, I want to show you an airport that we just finished last month, which is the built in, in Uruguay. And um, that for me is uh, one of these things that you, I don't know, maybe some other of our colleagues could tell you otherwise, but I really never thought that I knew what I was doing when I did this thing. And uh, it's an immensely short budget. Uh, I mean, really, like, it costs nothing. Um, and it's relatively small. It's uh, planned for no more than 4 million passengers. Uruguay uh, has today uh, a traffic of around 1.2 million passengers a year. And it's a, it's a, uh, it's a place, it, 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 the, the airport is this. This is the old and the new site for the airport. Um, the old building was built in here. Um, uh, Uruguay has this kind of very gentle, hilly landscape that is all like, no, it's, it's, it, it's all very, very shallow hills, uh, very rocky, and, and, um, and you never really have the sense of being in a flat condition. And it's, really this type of things that you know one learns to uh, be aware you know after 55 or so so um, I, I thought that intuitively that I had to kind of do this thing that uh, the building was really not only visible from the air <clears throat> but they were also visible from far away and it was it's such a small uh, um, bulk that it was almost impossible to make it look geographic so the building is a, is a shell that 
covers by far more than the central space, which is the whole space for the passengers. The building is a third of this length. It is a structure that is supported at the ends and is propped by the glass structure that in encases the building. Um, and in, in, uh, it's all made out of uh, steel inside and it's all covered inside and outside with plastic uh, surfaces. And um, in a way, uh, you know, obviously it is also an arch. I mean, th these are open spaces so the workers kind of circulate around. The canopy covers well into the planes. It's much larger than the building itself. And it kind of reminded me after um, uh, we, 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 we presented the scheme clearly of the, of the TWA terminal. Um, and I never thought that it was a, uh, something to be ashamed of because I still think that's one of the glorious buildings of American architecture. But it really also talks about the capacity of dealing with shapes that are simple but complicated in a way, in a way in which it's generated. This is not a circle, this is not a torus, this is basically a sculpted surface that at the edges sort of creates different curves. And one of the things that, one of the reasons why I said that I didn't know what I was doing is that um, by shaping this thing, when you walk around the building, the building literally changes form in, in really very unexpected ways, I thought. Um, uh, so the, the main canopy, uh, is uh, from the land side, uh, that's, the, that's the main avenue of access. Um, and, and you can see in here the, the box of glass that holds the, the roof together. Um, this is approaching the departures area. This is a view uh, uh, from the air side that, and, and the, the nose of the planes will come well into the, into the roof. So, you know, all the operations at the uh, departure and, and, and um, uh, the main operations of the plane occur uh, under cover too. Um, this is a canopy on the, on the uh, air side uh, and this is the uh, arrivals uh, hall uh, underneath the main axis. Um, and some of the pictures of the, of the, of the glass box that encloses the, uh, the structure, you can see here these V-shaped columns support the roof too. This is all plastic cover. And then at the top of this thing, there is this ramp that brings outside people up to this terrace. Um, in, in Uruguay, we, we're still kind of like in the 30s. We like planes and people go and see the planes and have a great deal of satisfaction um, uh, 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 receiving friends and family. And, and so it's a big, big event to, to come to it. Uh, I was there a week and a half ago, and I was absolutely surprised how many people really were there not taking a plane or, uh, or not actually um, uh, receiving anybody. There are restaurants and, and places at the top that makes it uh, really very, uh, very friendly and very open to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to use. And um, it, it, the lighting is all from the structure of the perimeter. There are no lighting fixtures at the top. The air conditioning comes directly at high level. This is a connection between the, uh, uh, the arrivals and the departure hall. That ramp is the ramp that is public that you can come to the top, to this large platform uh, where there are all the restaurants in here we're looking um, uh, the space. And uh, that's an image of, uh, of the building um, uh, uh, at dusk and um, uh, and I don't have too much more to show you, so thank you very much.